Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Political crisis engulfs Bangladesh with Sheikh Hasina's resignation and deadly protests. Baloch diaspora in Germany rallies against Pakistan state repression in Balochistan. And Indian Army intensifies operations against terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. The political landscape in Bangladesh has been upended as weeks of anti-government protests culminated in the resignation and flight of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. The unrest sparked by the reinstatement of a controversial quota system in government jobs has spiralled into the deadliest violence the country has seen in recent history. With at least 150 lives lost and thousands injured, the situation is deteriorating rapidly, raising concerns not only within Bangladesh but also among its neighbours. India is closely monitoring the situation with Prime Minister Narendra Modi calling an urgent meeting to address the developments in the neighbouring country. Our report will tell you more. The streets of Bangladesh are boiling over with unrest. After weeks of escalating anti-government protests, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina resigned and fled to India on August 5th. Her departure triggered a massive surge of chaos as protesters stormed her official residence in Dhaka, looting and vandalizing everything in sight. Reports indicate that at least 20 people were killed in the ensuing violence, adding to the tragic toll of more than 90 deaths recorded on August 4th, the deadliest day of demonstrations in the country's recent history. One of the Prime Minister has done a lot of work and the interim government has formed a lot of work and the interim government has done a lot of work. We have done a lot of work in the government of the government. We have done a lot of work in the government. We have done a lot of work in the government. We have done a lot of interim government in the government. एवं इंटरिम गवर्नमेंट के माध्यम में ये देशेर समस्त कार्य कलाब चल बे। हम राखन मोहम्मद ने राष्ट्रपति का से जाबो ये ए इंटरिम गवर्नमेंट फॉर्मेल बेपरे उन्हें शत आलाप आलोचना करे हम ने इंटरिम गवर्नमेंट फॉर्म करे देश पूरी चलाना को। The unrest began last month when student groups demanded the abolition of a controversial quota system in government jobs. What started as a call for reform quickly escalated into a broader movement against Hasina, who had been in power for 15 years, recently winning her fourth consecutive term in January. The quota system introduced by Hasina's father, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, in 1972, reserved 30% of civil service and public sector jobs for the descendants of those who fought in the 1971 Liberation War. Hasina abolished these quotas in 2018 amid student protests, but the decision was reversed by the High Court in June this year, reigniting the conflict. The reinstated quotas now account for 56% of government jobs reserved for specific groups, including freedom fighters' descendants, women, and people from underdeveloped districts. The violent protests over the reinstated quotas have resulted in at least 150 deaths and thousands of injuries. India, a close neighbour and ally, is keeping a watchful eye on the developments in Bangladesh. Prime Minister Narendra Modi convened a high-level security meeting in New Delhi to discuss the situation, while Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jayashankar briefed Parliament on India's stance. He emphasized India's concern over the unrest and heightened state of alert for border security forces. But will naturally remain deeply concerned till law and order is visibly restored. Our border guarding forces 
have also been instructed to be exceptionally alert in view of this complex situation. Religious minorities in Bangladesh are facing increased threats amid the unrest. Hindu temples have been attacked and an Indian cultural center in Dhaka was destroyed by supporters of Jamaat Islami, a radical Islamist group. Opportunists, whether it's the opposition uh, BNP or it's the Jamaat Islami, which is the radical uh, you know, pro Pakistan uh, Islamist grouping uh, that is uh, very active on the streets, uh, they have joined the protests and they have actually brought in that violence into the protests. You cannot rule out the involvement of foreign powers uh, who are inimical to Bangladesh's interests and frankly to our security interests also. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, there have, they, they, you cannot rule out the fact that certain uh, interests have uh, been fishing in troubled waters. In the wake of the violence, Sheikh Hasina sought refuge in India. Recognizing the gravity of her situation and the historical ties between the two nations, India provided her with a safe haven. This gesture underscores the enduring bond and solidarity between India and Bangladesh. Political leaders change, and but the countries have uh, long-term interests uh, uh, which uh, will not go away. Bangladesh is a is a close neighbor, is a neighboring country with whom we have had good relations so far. And uh, and, we, and I think India would certainly want to continue that because uh, whichever government takes place there, uh, takes over there. So that is, uh, that is not in debate that India would seek good relations. With India, if you look at the history of India's relations with Bangladesh, we have... Uh, uh, we have dealt with every government, including military dictators uh, who came in uh, and, and stayed for almost, uh, uh, I would say, almost uh, 20 years. And uh, so that's not an issue because uh, we will be dealing with Bangladesh. India's support during this crisis highlights its commitment to regional stability and humanitarian aid, reinforcing its role as a protector of democracy and a reliable neighbor. As Bangladesh navigates this turbulent period, the world watches closely, hoping for a swift return to peace and order. As the crisis in Pakistan's Balochistan deepens, the Baloch diaspora in Germany is raising its voice against the escalating state brutality back home. In a significant protest held in Hanover, demonstrators condemned the violent crackdowns on peaceful activists and called for global intervention. The event highlighted the dire human rights situation in Balochistan, where recent protests have been met with severe aggression by Pakistani forces. Despite the brutal repression, the Baloch community's resolve remains unshaken as they continue to demand justice and international recognition of their plight. A report. The Baloch diaspora in Germany staged a significant protest in Hanover, denouncing the escalating state brutality in Balochistan. The demonstration, which saw a large turnout, was a passionate plea for global attention to the dire human rights situation in the region. Protesters carried banners and placards condemning the recent violent crackdowns on Baloch Yagjati Committee and the severe state aggression against peaceful Baloch demonstrators. Messages on the placards decried the oppressive actions of the Pakistani government and called for justice. Starting from a central location in Hanover, the protesters marched through the main streets, finally gathering at Ernst August Platz. There, activists and community leaders delivered impassioned speeches aiming to highlight the critical situation in Gwadar, where ongoing protests face severe threats from Pakistan state forces. Pakistani forces opening fire on protesters during the Baloch National Gathering on 28th of July, which organized by the Baloch Yagjati Committee in Gawadar. 
the situation in balochistan is extremely tense and dangerous asserting that the region is under complete siege the situation in gwadar is also dire thousand of military personnel have brutally attacked on the baloch national gathering firing directly on public the situation is a complete war like scenario between the innocent unarmed baloch and the powerful ruthless pakistani military the baloch yakjati the baloch yakjati committee has called for wide spread resistance across balochistan urging the public to organize shutter down strikes block roads and resist oppression by any mean possible speakers at the hanover protest focused on the ongoing state brutality the systematic genocide of the baloch people and the plight of missing persons they urged international bodies to take immediate action and expressed unwavering solidarity with their compatriots back home and for disappearances extrajudicial killings and systematic oppression will not silence us how many lives must be lost how many time must the baloch people be denied their basic human rights the rent licks clings and abduction coupled with the use of force and weapons against innocent civilians will not go unnoted drabulatagi and violence inflicted upon our people only strengthen our resolve for too long the voice of baloch people have been stifled they endured daily hardship including and for disappearances and extra digital killings while being denied basic human rights despite its strategic important and wealth of resources balochistan suffer from ex- extreme poverty and underdevelopment worsening the struggle of its people on july 28 Thousands of Baloch gathered in Gwadar for the Baloch National Gathering, advocating for their rights and self-determination. The Baloch Yekjati Committee has organized additional sit-ins in Turbat, Panchku, Quetta, and Noshki to protest state barbarism. Reports from the ground indicate that Pakistani security forces violently dispersed these peaceful sit-ins, detaining 12 women and 50 men, including prominent activists. Gwadar is now under a strict curfew, with over 1,000 locals arrested amid the protests. The region has been cut off from the internet, isolating residents and blocking the flow of information. Pakistani security forces including the frontier corps and police are beating and torturing residents in the streets. Many activists have been killed or injured by direct state fire. Despite these brutal crackdowns, protests continue across Balochistan, amplifying the voice of the Baloch people and drawing greater international attention to their plight. Moving on, protests by traders in Pakistan-occupied Gilgit-Baltistan against the Federal Board of Revenue and Pakistan Customs have escalated, blocking the CPEC route and halting trade with China. For nearly three weeks, traders have been demanding implementation of a court ruling that exempts them from taxes. Due to ongoing protests, many foreign travelers, including tourists from various European countries, were seen stranded at Sost Dry Port. As the standoff continues, the traders are resolute on their demands for justice. We have a report. The recent protests by Gilgit Baltistan traders against the Federal Board of Revenue and Pakistan Customs has intensified, with protesters blocking the crucial SIPAC route and suspending travel and trade between Pakistan-occupied Gilgit Baltistan and China. The protest outside Sost Dry Port by those affiliated with trade between POGB and China through Kunjre Pass has reached the third week. 
the traders demand authorities to implement POGB's chief court decision that deemed income tax, sales tax and additional sales tax on imported items from China as unlawful. Our port cooperation was 26 days ago and the consignment came from 8 months ago. We understand that Gilgit Baldesan is a very strong part and here there are no taxes in Pakistan. There is an international law, no taxation without representation. Parliament and Senate are not my opinion, so who are they that I will adopt the taxation of the taxation? اگر الحاق پاکستان کی جو ولنٹیر ہمارے آبا و اجداد نے کی تھی تو یہاں کے تاجروں نے یہ ٹیکس دیا ہے تو یہ اس ولنٹیر کے حصہ ہے ورنہ ہمارے پر ٹیکس تو نہیں ہے لیکن اس دفعہ ایک ممبر کسٹم آیا بائی بک چلوں گا ایک کلیکٹر کسٹم آیا اس نے کہا میں بھی بک پر چلتا ہوں ایک میڈم ہے چیف کلیکٹر وہ بھی کہتے ہیں میں بک پر چلوں گا تو ہم نے کہا چلو جی بک کے تشریح کرتے ہیں تو ہم انریبل کوڈ گئے پہلے ہم اسمبلی میں گئے ان کا ایک متفقہ قرارداد پاس ہوا گلگت بلدستان کی اسمبلی کا اس کے بعد گلگت بلدستان ہائی کورٹ نے ایک فیصلہ دیا کہ سوچ ڈائی پورٹ پر سیل ٹیکس انکم ٹیکس آپ نہ لے لیں جو درم ہے اسی کا تسلسل ہے جب تک یہ ہمارے مطالبات منظور نہیں ہوتے ہیں انکم ٹیکس سیل ٹیکس کا جو ہے نا ایکزنشن کورٹ کے آڈر پر اور اسمبلی کے جو ریزولوشن پر عمل درامت نہیں ہوتا ہے تو نو ایار دنوں سے ہم پورٹ کے باہر تھے اور ہم آج سی پی ایک روگ کو بند کر کے بیٹھے ہیں اور یہ درنا اس وقت تک جاری رہے گا جب تک یہ مطالبات منظور نہیں ہوتے ہیں The ongoing protest has left both foreign and local passengers unable to travel to China by road. A significant number of foreign travelers, including tourists from various European countries, have been stranded at Sost Dry Port for quite a while. Although some foreign nationals have been permitted to proceed, local passengers and transport operators are still unable to cross the border. The foreign tourists are facing problems as their visas are on verge of expiry. They have also joined the traders' sit-in, standing in solidarity with the protesters in the hope that it will increase pressure on the authorities and lead to the border reopening soon. Really, I want to cross the border to Sost. I, with a group of people there, well, there are too many people here waiting, foreign people waiting, um, people from here also, but there are a strike. So we are here, I don't know until when. Uh, we have some problems also because the visa of a friend is spared tomorrow, maybe it's spared in two days. So we have this problem also that we didn't know how we can resolve it. But yeah, if we hope that that uh, can start to run tomorrow like in a normal way, because really we have to go and there are people that have flights also, that they go to lose his flight in China. So I am here with over 50 international tourists from all over the world. We each have different situation, but we are stuck here because of the strike on the border in Sost going from Pakistan into China. We are very sympathetic with the local situation, but we feel like we are hostages. As protests go on at the sourced dry port, the Gilgit Baltistan chief court order to quash taxes on traders seem a mere play of appeasement. The authorities working in cohorts with Islamabad are blatantly imposing taxes while reminding traders that the local legislative machinery in POGB holds no power. In such a scenario, the traders have resorted to continue their protest against the Federal Board of Revenue and Pakistan Customs until their demands are met. Let's now shift our focus to the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir where the Indian Army has ramped up its counter-terrorism operations in the region. A major joint search effort involving the Army, Police and CRPF is underway in Udhampur, targeting terrorist networks entrenched in the area. Despite Pakistan's ongoing domestic challenges and its role in fueling cross-border terrorism, India's comprehensive counter-terrorism strategy, including military action and intelligence operations, is effectively disrupting these threats. Our report. 
In a decisive move to counter Pakistan's persistent efforts to fuel terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir, the Indian Army has intensified its operations across the region. A large-scale joint operation involving the police, army and the Central Reserve Police Force is currently underway in the challenging terrains of Uddampur district. Security forces made significant contact with a group of terrorists in the Pathi Nala Khaned area of Basantagar. According to officials, brief exchanges of gunfire were reported as the joint team of police and army pushed deeper into the dense forests to neutralize the threat. सीरिया का जो खनेड एरिया है उसका कॉर्डन किया है काफी पहाड़ी इलाका है और आजकल जो है जंगल के साथ साथ आसपास होने के हैबिटेशन के पास मक्की की फसल भी जो है वो भी लगी हुई है तो इसके चलते जो है हमारा जो कॉर्डन है वो बड़ा डेलिवरेट तरीके से चला और कल मॉर्निंग में हमने जो ऑपरेशन लॉन्च किया था कॉमले हमारे स्पेशल जगह से हमको तकरीबन साढ़े चार बजे जो है हमारे उसके साथ कॉन्टैक्ट हुआ और उसके बाद तकरीबन दो घंटे में दो बार दो बार जो है कॉन्टैक्ट स्टेबलिश किया गया अभी भी जो हमारी खबर है कि एक ग्रुप जो है वो हमारे कॉर्डन के अंदर फंसा हुआ है और उसी के चलते यहाँ पर दूसरे दिन का ऑपरेशन जो है चल रहा है उधमपुर अ माउंटेनियस डिस्ट्रिक्ट विद इन जम्मू डिवीजन हैज बिकम अ नोन हाइड आउट फॉर फॉरेन टेररिस्ट्स टू डिसमेंटल दीज नेटवर्क्स द इंडियन आर्मी हैज डिप्लॉयड ओवर 4000 सोल्जर्स across the hilly districts of Jammu involving Poonch, Rajori, Doda, Katua, Riyasi and Uthampur. The deployed forces include elite para-commandos and troops specially trained in mountain warfare, all working tirelessly to counter hit-and-run attacks launched by terrorists from their forest strongholds. Despite Pakistan's ongoing internal struggles, marked by an unstable economy, rising inflation, political instability and a powerful military, the country continues to support infiltration into Indian territories. However, this strategy has backfired as Pakistan now faces severe repercussions both domestically and internationally due to its long-standing involvement in terrorism. Experts believe that despite decades of supporting and facilitating infiltration into Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistan has not succeeded in altering the status quo or achieving its political goals. Instead, Pakistan finds itself grappling with the adverse consequences of terrorism within its own borders. We have witnessing, you know, sharp increase in militant activities, particularly in Jammu area, because India's major concentration was on the valley, but this time, you know, because this is a very porous uh, borders, you know, there are number of nalas, there are number of uh, uh, places where they can uh, easily infiltrate into India. Although uh, the guard is there, but it's still they have been managing to come in, at least in the border. So, uh, and second thing we have also noticed, whenever there is a crisis in Pakistan, they try to divert towards India. Pakistan is in deep crisis, the state has failed. Militant uh, are striking everywhere, you know. In a related operation in Jammu and Kashmir's Anantanag district, security forces successfully apprehended three terrorist associates and uncovered a significant cache of arms and ammunition. The persistent infiltration efforts by Pakistan backed terrorists aim to destabilize the region, 
but India's comprehensive counter-terrorism strategy is proving effective. This strategy not only includes military operations but also involves the border security force intercepting drones carrying illicit cargo and the National Investigation Agency dismantling financial networks that support terrorism. While the battle against terrorism continues, India's multi-pronged approach is making significant strides in curbing the threat, ensuring that the region of Jammu and Kashmir moves towards a more peaceful future. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia.